Hi, welcome to n etv I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Anastasia Westlink Mullering. Did I say it right? Did I mess yeah. it up? <laughs> and, she, and your near-death experience happened in a dentist's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2019. Um, you know, I wouldn't have understood this, but last year I was in the dentist's office. I never had a problem. And they ended up calling the squad for me. And sent me to the emergency room. I had some kind of experience, <laughs> so this this works my interest. And uh, yeah, did they ever find out what yours was from? Was it allergic reaction? Because mine was just like they said, must be. They said some people do this for no reason. Yeah, I think. I mean, I didn't get a conclusive answer from the dentists themselves, but based off of what I've learned since then and talking to other dentists, that is likely what happened. Is that allergic reaction? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I've had, you know, all kinds of work, the same stuff. Uh, the only difference was they never gave me the laughing gas this time and mm -hmm. which just relaxed me and they didn't give it to me. And, um, I was waiting for that. They gave me the shot and then I was waiting for the laughing gas and they just gave me the shot and they just started to get ready. And I was like, what did you put in there? I'm thinking they must've put something for laughing gas in the shot. And I was floating wasn't out of body, you know, have experience like you. I was just like high, like immediately as soon as they put that in and they started checking my blood pressure and they thought I was having a heart attack. It went way up, kept going up, kept going up. And they called the squad. <laughs> so, Looks and like so they, okay. yeah, they rushed me in the, uh, the emergency room and you know how they come running, you know, to the cart mm -hmm. when, because they're thinking heart attack. And I was, and I said, where's your pain? I'm like, I'm the opposite of pain. <laughs> <laughs> you're having your best moment ever <laughs> yeah. yeah they were laughing because i was like this is some good stuff <laughs> anyway i'll stop i'll let you tell your story <laughs> yeah um so thank you so much for having me on here i am um, always just so humbled when others are interested in the story so like you said it did happen in a dentist's office it was December of 2019, I went in for what was a rather invasive procedure. And through the course of preparation, as the dentist was getting me prepared, I was going under um, nitrous oxide. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm not one to really have a whole lot of medical procedures done. I'm not familiar really with, with some of those um, reactions or even what it feels like to go under some of these different um, medical procedures. And as I was getting comfortable, the dentist had me all prepped and I, I began getting this like strange sensation in my body. And I didn't really think too much of it at first because it just wasn't something that I had any comparison for. And it felt like as I was breathing, like I was coming up out of my body on the breath and then falling back in. And as time progressed, it was getting more and more intense. And it felt like I was going out of my body more and coming back in. And I had this really strange internal pressure that I was feeling building up. And I was really starting to debate whether or not I should say anything because it was, I was kind of growing a little bit worried as it wasn't subsiding, it was getting worse. And as I was just about ready to say something, because I thought, okay, this, this really isn't right. Um, immediately, I was in the ceiling looking down at my body. And now, at this moment, everything changes and shifts because I talk about this as if one thing happens after another, but in reality, from my experience, it was as if everything was happening simultaneously. And so as I was looking down at my body, I had this immediate awareness of the fact that, wait a minute, I said, what am I doing up here versus why am I down there? And it it really opened up this uh, awareness, this epiphany that everything that I identified with, with whatever I was up in the ceiling at that moment was who I really was. That was the me, that was the I. And the body that was down in the dental chair was just a body. I, I recognized it, I knew it was my body, but I didn't identify with it. What I identified with was the me that was up in the ceiling. and. My next thought was, am I dead? Because why else would I be in the ceiling? 
And in that moment, I flipped upside down. And now just to give you a little bit of perspective, I was so close to the ceiling when I flipped upside down that I remember all of this very intricate detail. It was like I could see the ceiling almost like a like under a microscope. It was and it was beautiful. This is what's really striking to me is we've all seen a ceiling. There's nothing really all that remarkable about a ceiling. But in that moment, every crack, every crevice, the little bits of dust, everything just seemed like it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. And now keep in mind, it was like <laughs> really, yeah, really it's just, I think getting things. used to that different awareness. It was hyper awareness. Yeah. Uh, but it was looking at it as if it felt almost as if it was the first time I had ever seen a ceiling, like a child observing something that's just fantastical and magnificent and wondrous. It had that kind of feeling. And the next thing I know, I am out. I am no longer in the dentist's office and I am in this place that visually, there was no sight for me. It's why I call it the void because it doesn't really have any, it didn't have any definition for me. But the feeling, the feeling was so remarkable. It was as if I was wrapped in a blanket of completeness and oneness and love and bliss. It was as if I was a part of the fabric of all of existence and I was one with it and everybody was one with it. Now, like I said, time didn't exist. So there was no time. There was no understanding of time. There was just this awareness of being complete and being at one with this area that I was in. And I've now called it the oneness because I find that the best description for it is really that. It is something that represents everything that has ever existed, ever will exist, ever does exist, for as far as my understanding in that space could, could really connect to. Now, in this place, I felt as if I were expanding infinitely in an accelerated rate. So this awareness that I had was growing. And I felt this connection to every single living soul. Did you see others? I did not. And so this is what's so interesting because my vision, I didn't have vision. And so I've, I've talked about it. Like, it seems like when I got there, almost like I blinked my eyes and I went from the dentist's office into this place that I call the void. But it, it's almost as if I closed my eyes for some reason, I maybe didn't open them back up. And so what I was seeing was just blackness, but it was a rich, velvety, comforting, tangible blackness. It wasn't a blackness that felt eerie or empty. And as a matter of fact, at, even though I call it the void, what it felt to me was it was actually the void of anything not complete because everything there was absolutely complete, as if things that were not complete couldn't even exist. It wasn't possible. Everything that had ever been had always been complete and had well, always been connected to this. Like place. you experienced your soul, but not, and I experienced other things, like, you know, typical NDEs of, of seeing and hearing movement um different visions i mean you were just like in your consciousness is that am i sound am, am i not making it sound right or so i think it's kind of a little bit difficult for anybody to put words on it that have any universal meaning to anybody because what i might call the soul and what you might call the soul might be different we might think about them differently we might use them as different contexts what I would say is, is that no NDE is typical. Every NDE is absolutely unique to the person and what they go through. Now, there are elements of NDEs that I've learned about since mine 
that do tend to be, um, they do tend to appear from time to time in a lot of NDEs. Now, I did not have a quote unquote life review where I saw my life uh, quote unquote flash before my eyes. What I felt was every feeling I had ever had and every feeling anybody that I had ever connected to had ever had. It was not a visual. It was completely experiential for me. I mean, did you experience others' feelings? It was all simultaneous. It was as if I had experienced everybody's feelings all at once. And it's hard to put our, our mind around it because our minds don't have any way yeah. to understand that. Yeah, it's like we want to see, we want to see what you saw, we want to hear what you heard. You know, mm -hmm. we want to go like from place to place, you know, we want to do all these things. And you're just like in this. It was a knowing. It, and I think that is one of the hardest, what makes it so hard to describe, because in that place, your knowingness is outside of your mind. So the things that we know here, I, you know, I can learn about the color black. I can know that I'm a, a, a female, a woman. I can know black and white. But that's based off of the mind's understanding. And in that place, there was no thought process. Everything was instant. The knowing was instant. The feeling was instant. There wasn't a need to learn or understand anything. It was simply being aware and then knowing it instantly. You know, I, I just like, I'm trying to picture it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want a picture. And so. And I, and I think that is one of the, um, one of the interesting things about my experience is what I came back understanding. So fast forward until the moment I, I came back into my body and I uh, opened my eyes when I was back in the dentist uh, chair and in the office. One of the things that was really, really clear to me, um, and this is fast forwarding a little bit, but when I came to, it was as if the, the whole aperture of that connection was beginning to close, like sand flowing through the fingers where I was grasping to hold on to it, but it was fading away from me. And the thing that was so clear, so absolutely clear, was that our physical bodies are like sensory tools for the soul. And that the physical body and all of our senses, our sight, our sound, our tactile touch, our taste, everything is for us to understand this physical existence and to share that understanding at the soul level. Now, part of that requires our brain. It requires our brain as our processing center for all of those senses. It's how we learn and understand our surroundings here in the physical. And so our ability to understand another person's experience physically requires those senses. So it would require me to use words to describe what it looked like, what it, what it sounded like, what it smelled like. But the connection to the soul is the feeling. And so when, when I talk about the fact that we are more than our body, that we are our physical bodies here are more kind of like the vehicle that we're in for my experience and that who we really are is actually that soul or any word that might work for you that is more than the physical body. That's who we truly are. But that part of us doesn't rely on the physical senses. That part of us is the feeling. It is the completeness. It is the knowing. It is the all one blissful love. And so the fact that my experience, for me at least, I brought back that intimate feeling, that's, that's like the super highway to the soul. If you can get into that place to where listening to my words helps you go inward to that feeling versus staying in the mind and trying to visualize or trying to, to think about what it would sound like. That's the closest connection to the soul that I could use words to describe that we can get to while we're in our physical body. What did your dentist say? Like he had no explanation? Like, did he say like, where were you or something like that? Or 
Are you okay? No. So he did, he did bring me back. He came, um, he was hovering, like his face was over me. He was, had a look of concern, but here's the thing that, you know, since then I've had, I've been asked this question so many times, you know, what did the dentist say? You know, were you rushed to an emergency room? And I didn't get rushed to an emergency room. I, I wasn't, you know, resuscitated in that sense. Obviously, there was something not right because the dentist was concerned. But in that moment, I had no idea what just happened. All I knew was as I was aware that the dentist was there, I knew he was there, but I didn't care. I just wanted to go back to where I just was. That was my sole focus in that moment. And for the moments, literally for the rest of that visit, I don't know that I may have said two words to the dentist after that, because my only desire was to go back to that place that I was just in and to try to not lose that connection. To this day, I feel like that connection is still there. Like I have a foot in two worlds, so to speak, but nowhere near as connected as I was right after I came back. And obviously when I was in the void, um, that was completely all consuming. Now, didn't you have an atheist upbringing? I did, yeah. So my mom was a atheist. She raised me um, in a household that wasn't surrounded by any type of religious upbringing or teachings. Um, we were just taught to you know, be good people to be good people. And uh, it wasn't until later in my life that I got some exposure to the Christian faith through uh, my first marriage and that family being a preacher's family. And then later on, um, I started to experiment uh, and learn about spirituality in my 30s. And then when I left my first marriage, um, I really understood that, you know, a lot about Christianity. I learned a lot in that, you know, almost decade of my life. Uh, but for me, the Christian faith provided, um, uh, I guess, one way to approach life, and but it didn't feel right for me. Um, and so at that time when I had my NDE, I would say I was very much in a I'm open place, but I didn't hold any firm beliefs about religion or um, even why we're here. Now, um, since then, since the dentist office, um, did you like become more spiritual and kind of turn it into a business? Um, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm more spiritual. I, I guess I try to avoid labels as much as I can because I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, after, after my experience, um, it felt to me like all of the different ways that we can talk about our existence and understand our existence, whether that's use, using religion or spirituality um, or even being an atheist or agnostic, those are all different ways that we uh, try to understand our own purpose and our own place and where we came from. None of those fit. The only thing that fits is that we are all one, that I am you, you are me, and that we are part of everything. And that in our physical bodies, we have a limited understanding of that. And that through the feeling, we get to keep that connection and deepen that connection and cultivate that connection. And it's not about checking a box here, trying to do good or do bad or avoid doing bad. All of those things are important while we're in the physical life because that's what makes our life comfortable and fulfilling here. But truly finding those things that create bliss and joy in this physical life, those are the key. That's the gateway to the connections that's part of us that is so much more than the physical. That is what I, I feel connected to. I feel connected to that. Some people might call that spirituality. Uh, just because maybe we don't have another word for it. But to me, spirituality still feels limited to that experience. Um, I am very connected to people. And so I tend to have a um, 
feel what you feel kind of experience with a lot of people that I interact with. Uh, and I do the best that I can to help people heal, given my experience and that connection to the other side that I still have. How do you do, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you do that? How do you help people heal? So sometimes it's just doing this, having conversations and, and sharing this message. Um, sometimes it is being the confidant and the trustee of somebody who's going through something traumatic. Um, and sometimes it's working with people one on one. There's really no straight line to it. I, I attempt to at least, and sometimes I'm successful and sometimes I'm not because I'm human like anybody else. But I attempt to be uh, as of service as I possibly can be. I, I thought you opened some kind of um, shop in Chicago that kind of helps with, I guess, spirituality is the wrong word, so I don't know how to ask you. <laughs> uh, oh, so in, in terms of that, um, I do. I have a wellness clinic in the suburbs of Chicago, um, but I think that is more, you know, not that I, I don't want to talk about it or, or that it is um, not important. The work that we do is incredibly important. We create wholeness and wellness. That is really kind of how we, we work with people. But I feel like that is really secondary to the message and what I brought back. It, it's not about me. It's not oh, about okay. that. It's really about the, um, the ability okay. to help all of us deepen that connection. I'm just familiar with you know, a lot of people that are guests that they have an experience and then they bec say become a media or they are helping um, other parents that have lost a child um, with, you know, you know, that it kind of feeds off of that. So I guess I assumed there that that was in relation to your experience, but I guess not. I do have, like I said, I do have the practice, um, but it is, I feel like our life kind of flows for us. So if we stay really connected, then we, we are flowing into the things that our soul wants us to experience and the best that we can be of service to ourselves and of others. Now, um, I think I heard you mention another podcast. You had um, heard something um, when your mother, your mother who's atheist was passing. Do you want to share that? Um, are you talking about the chaplain that was at the hospital? Um, I thought like a voice or said something to you um, as your, your mother was passing. Um, so I thought maybe so you had a, a spiritual experience. You know, sometimes I, people. Yeah, I my um, experience, I did have a very profound experience when my mother did pass. Um, I don't believe I've actually shared that, that particular experience anywhere publicly. Um, what I did have happen to me, though, was this was the turning point between my transition from Christianity, understanding atheism, all the way into spirituality to where I am now. And that was when we were trying to make the decision as to whether or not to have a bedside prayer and to have a chaplain or a... Yeah, uh, that was it. Uh, I think it was on yeah, Jeff Mar. Yeah, um, to have somebody come in and do a bedside prayer because my mother was in fact an atheist and my views and her views at that point in my life may not have exactly aligned, but being somebody that really wanted to honor her and especially in her last moments, I was wrestling with what do I do? Because an atheist um, would not ask for somebody to come in to do a bedside prayer. And speaking to the hospital chaplain about that uh, the day before she did pass, I was sharing with him this inner conflict that I had. And the chaplain said, you know what? God is so big that he can handle all beliefs. And your mom, being an atheist, your beliefs, they're all part of God's beliefs. And to this day, I still get goosebumps when I think about what he said, because, oh, okay. you know, every once in a while, you have those things that you hear from somebody in the course of your life that resonate and stay with you for the, your entire life. And that single phrase was enough for me to open up and realize that every single belief that we hold, every single understanding, they are all encompassing. It's, and at the time I used the word God because I hadn't had my experience yet. Now I wouldn't use the word God. I would still use the word oneness 
And from my perspective, God and, and the oneness that I experience were one and the same, are one and the same. God and oneness are the same. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that yeah. means. You know what I mean? Like that might be typical in like your language, but like for me, I'm like, I don't know what that means. And I think a lot of people would be like, could you explain that? <laughs> <What's> that <mean? laughs> so this is where it can be really challenging because everybody um, has their own unique definition of God. So from my, my experience, the best way I can explain it is um, imagine an ocean or imagine a rainbow. Imagine white light into a prism that white light is complete the ocean is complete but yet if you put white light through a prism you get a rainbow of colors and each one of those colors are distinctive and unique but they're all part of the whole think of the best way i could explain it would be that oneness that i was in or the void or whatever word works would be like the light the white light and then each one of us here in our physical bodies would be like a color of the rainbow that was refracted through the prism. All of us part of that whole, but individual and unique. So we make up that entirety. And that oneness is what I would call a God. And that's how I feel we are all connected, but yet we're all individual. Okay. Is there anything else do you want to add? So from my experience, um, I came back with a really keen understanding that as it relates to our physical bodies and this physical experience, we're really evolving our ability to bring our soul essence into this physical experience. And that there is right or wrong on the physical level, but as it relates to the soul, there is no right or wrong that translates into an experience that we would have on the other side or judgment that would be placed on us. There is no elimination of a soul. There is no, you know, judgment in that regard as it would relate to do good here, get good on the other side, do bad here, you know, experience bad on the other side. The most important aspect of our experience is what we feel. That's what we take with us. We take our feelings with us. We take the impact that we have on others with us. We feel everything that we've ever experienced and that the other people who we're connected to also experience. And so our ability to make a profound impact is something that stays with us even after we leave our physical bodies. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.